In this video, we're going to talk about the top tips to think about when getting started with food activities in your classroom. Tip number one, know the policy about food in the classroom. To start, know that if you are participating in the Peas Institute, you already have permission to use food-based learning using the activities we have provided. Many centers have a no outside food policy, but this policy rarely applies to food learning activities that use healthy foods. Centers who have this policy in place are attempting to prevent unhealthy foods, like cakes, candy, and fried foods from entering the classroom. Head Start policies regarding food in the classroom may vary from center to center. Talk with your supervisor to clarify any policies that may seem restrictive or unclear regarding food. Tip number two, decide what healthy foods you want to feature. Consider exploring fruits and vegetables already featured on your center's menu for ease of access. Talk with your nutrition manager to advocate for a new fruit or vegetable to appear on the menu based on activities you would like to do or fruits or vegetables that families have identified as important in their culture. You can also ask your nutrition manager about sourcing fruits and vegetables for meals and snacks from local vendors to ensure fruits and vegetables are fresh and delicious. Tip number three, plan ahead. You may also want to bring in food that is not on your center's menu. Be sure to plan ahead and consider your center's procedures for purchasing foods. Your Head Start Center may require you to submit requests for purchasing foods ahead of time. Plan ahead by thinking about what healthy, culturally appropriate foods you would like to feature for the month, and submit your request early to ensure you will have enough time to acquire the materials prior to your activity. Tip number four, consider allergies. Prior to bringing in food, be sure to consider children in your classroom who may have food allergies. Children with allergies or immune system related illness may need special consideration and or accommodation. Children with food allergies or intolerances can have mild to severe reactions if they taste, touch, or in some cases smell the allergen. Also, avoid cross-contamination by ensuring allergenic foods do not come in contact with other items in the classroom, such as surfaces, utensils, and other food items. Always check with families and your health or nutrition manager ahead of time to ensure new foods are safe for the children in your classroom. Tip number five, safety first. When doing food experiences, never serve food that is undercooked, including meats or eggs unpasteurized, including milk, yogurt, and cheese, spoiled, or expired, including foods past their best buy date. Fresh fruits and vegetables are safe to consume raw after being washed with running water. However, other foods should never be served or used for activities when raw, such as raw flour or uncooked baking mixes. Serving these foods has been linked to foodborne outbreaks. Store all cleaning supplies and sharp objects, such as paring knives, in a safe, locked space outside of the reach of children. Make sure to thoroughly wash all cooking utensils, supplies, equipment, counters, tabletops, and sinks, using soap and water or a spray disinfectant, after food has been used as a learning tool. You may have had previous concerns about sanitation when using food in the classroom. To address these concerns, when using raw fruits and vegetables, allow children to independently prepare their own recipe to avoid cross-contamination between other children. However, if you are planning to cook the ingredients using heat, children can work together to prepare the recipe. When in doubt, review your Head Start program's policy and protocols for classroom safety. Now that you've learned about these five strategies to get started with food experiences in your classroom, let's take a moment to review what we've learned. First, know the policy regarding outside foods in your center. Talk to your supervisor to ensure food-based learning activities involving outside foods are allowed where you teach. Second, decide what healthy foods you want to feature in these learning activities. You might choose vegetables which are already on your center menu or talk with your nutrition manager about incorporating local foods that are culturally relevant to your students. Third, 
Make sure you plan ahead so you have time to request different foods if needed, as well as time to secure any supplies you may need for food-based learning activities. Fourth, consider children's allergies when selecting foods. Talk with families and your health or nutrition manager to ensure featured foods are not a threat to any child's health. Finally, promote safety during food activities by not serving foods which could be unsafe, storing cleaning supplies and sharp objects away from children, cleaning supplies used well, and avoiding cross-contamination. For more ideas, check out your PEAS teaching guide.